Hey everyone, welcome back to the tax show for people who owe. I'm Dave. And I'm Phil. And we're going to cover more on the tax season updates we started to talk about last week. Something unique about this tax season is that we actually have new enforcement streams or campaigns happening during tax season. So Phil, what are some of those campaigns we've seen so far? So far, we've had uh, the catch-up notices and the LT38s, right, for people who owed in the past. And that's for tax years prior to 2022. Correct. Okay. We've had even penalty abatements for 2020 and 2021 for COVID relief. Good point. We covered that one earlier in the show. Um, and most recently, 2022 is running as normal, right? We see those 501s, 504s running and being sent out to taxpayers who owe. So it's been very busy here at Optima because taxpayers who owe are getting notices and there's usually demand, higher demand during tax season, but you couple that with notices and 2022 that's bleeding over into tax season. Usually that happens much earlier in the year, but now because of the delays and the IRS enforcement and notices, it's actually happening during tax season. Absolutely. And all these campaigns and the newest special project that we've seen announced from the IRS is a targeted campaign for high income non-filers. If you have high income and you're not compliant, watch out. The IRS is coming for you. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. Um, the number is about 125,000, but it's not an exact number. I think they're kind of targeting those that earn um, between 400,000 to a million dollars over this five year span of 2017 through 2021. So if you're cumulative income or is that just income for one year? What are they looking at? What are they? It's hard to understand, right? That's a great question. Um, just based on a plain reading of the notice and announcement, it looks like it's cumulative. I mean, they're talking about $100 billion in financial activities amongst the segment of um, non-filers. Non-filers. Now that's a campaign we haven't seen in years, right? You've been largely left alone if you haven't filed a return from the IRS. Is that changing in a broader sense or just for the non-filers though? I think this is the first foray into this space. Um, IRS is working hard, but also working very smart and targeting those that might have a larger liability. And a big theme that I've been seeing lately over all these campaigns is fairness. Fairness, that's great. And that's part of the IRS motto, or mission statement, fairness and application of all tax laws, right? Right, and especially for those who are following the rules as Werfel uh, directly says. Danny Werfel is the commissioner of the IRS, right? Correct. Let's help him out there. So he did say that his approach or his quote was, you, you go after, you enforce on the, the folks that are making more, it's going to drive compliance all the way down to the folks who are making a lot less. So that's his target. And I think it makes sense to target with the high earners, make it more fair for the folks who may not, maybe struggle a little more year in, year out. Make sense? Absolutely. And I think another good point to bring up is high, what is high income, David? Um, maybe, you know, we might think of millionaires, you know, in Beverly Hills and things like that. But if it is truly just a cumulative amount of income or income activity amongst these five years, we're only looking at 80 to $200,000 per year on average. Yeah, only. So that's uh, not many people are making 200 grand, but there's quite a few people, especially here in California, making 80 grand. You can make that uh, at some fast food restaurants. Okay, so people may not understand what SFR stands for. Right? What does it stand for? Fair point, David. Uh, substitute for a return. Okay. That means that the IRS is actually going to sub, not like at a football game or a basketball sub. This is actually a sub you don't want. Correct. Why? Because IRS, while they have your income information, don't have information about your deduction, household size, and any itemized deductions that you might want to claim. So if they file a return for you, it's not necessarily the best result? No, it probably is the most um, worst case scenario. Okay. So uh, with that, what advice do you give? And we've given this many, many times to folks who still have unfiled returns, especially if they're high income earners. As usual, do something. And in this case, you want to act before the IRS acts because of penalties and interest. You might see a sticker shock if you do get SFR. So the sooner you act, the more you can mitigate those penalties and interest. Great point. I always say it's always better to approach the IRS before they approach you. Be proactive, get that fi tax filing done, and things should be okay. Phil, let's close out with your parting words. You already said it. What are you going to say today? Well, I'm going to borrow some words from the commissioner himself by saying, this is the time to make it right. If you owe, the risk will only grow. And most importantly, don't hesitate to reach out to a trusted tax professional as soon as possible. Like Phil. Thank you for joining today, everyone. We'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching today. Please be sure to like and subscribe so you are up to date with all the information you need when you're taking on the IRS. And as always, do something.